Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Growl. Growl is for four to seven players, and it is a game of treachery and traitorism, in which you will be playing as either a human or a werewolf. In the game, you're going to get assigned a role based on the cards that are dealt to you, and then you are going to put a card stack in the middle of the table and have players draw from the bottom of the stack face up, in which case you're going to see the cards as you're dealing them out. You can't look at the card underneath, but you can look at the top card to pass it to another player. So it might be a bite, it could could be a wound, could be a salve, could be a charm. These are things that are either going to negate bites and wounds, or you're going to have the wounds and bites. Three bites will turn you into a werewolf, and three wounds will kill you. One person is going to start off as a werewolf, and if you ever turn into a werewolf at any point in time, you're never able to turn back into a human, and there's always at least one werewolf at the start of the game. Throughout the game, players may die if they get three wounds without having anything to heal them, and if all the players at the end of the game are werewolves, then the werewolves win. However, if at the end of the game uh, there's at least one human alive, left alive then the humans are going to win anyway let me go show you the game so here's the game growl and as you see it's just a bunch of cards it comes with a couple of these little chits here you'll be using as you collect gold throughout the game and as you acquire them you're going to be uh successfully winning the game provided you get enough gold uh, in the game you're going to be getting a plethora of cards so to start the game everybody is going to get depending on the number of players a singular card now the singular card is either going to be gold or a bite card and as you can see here they've set up for five players as well as three random cards from the deck and you're going to set up a deck depending on how many players is being, being played and take out cards depending on that as well. There are night cards and final night cards which you'll be adding to the deck of cards and then bite and wounds. Bites are going to turn you into a werewolf and wounds will turn you into a dead person. These are objectives that will show you what you're going to do as a human or as a werewolf. They're simple cards you'll use that you'll put in front of you as well as the setup for six, seven, five, or four players. The rest of the deck of cards is going to include stuff like the bites and the wounds, charms, a hex, some gold, and of course there's going to be salves that will keep you from dying. This is the main aspect of what you're going to be getting in the game. Let's talk about how to play. So to begin setting up the game, it's pretty simple. Everybody is going to get a singular card. In a five player game, there's gonna be four gold cards and one bite card. You're gonna shuffle those out and deal them amongst the players. The player that starts with the bite card is going to be the werewolf. You're then going to deal out three cards additionally to every player. If any player gets three bite cards and has no charms, then they are going to also be a werewolf. And if any player has three wound cards, in the case that it rarely ever happens, you'll shuffle and deal that player out new cards. So that way they don't start off as a dead player. After everybody's gotten their four cards in hand, one being the one to determine whether they're a werewolf or not, and then the rest of them being what they're going to begin with the game. You're going to take the rest of the deck after taking out cards. In a five-player game, you're going to take out four wounds and two bite cards. You're going to take the deck of cards, flip it over, and then you're going to see the front card. Now, the front-facing card is going to be dealt out to the, by the player that starts the game. So if you start the game off, you're going to see this card as a charm and pass it to the player that, you have a, that you're choosing to do so. As you go throughout the game, you're going to end up uh, getting to knight cards, and when that happens, everybody's going to pass a card from their hand face down to a player on their left and a player on their right. If you're a human, you can't pass out bite cards, and if you're a werewolf, you can. However, you're going to take the two cards you get, one from each left and right, shuffle those cards up, and add them to your hand. If you become dead, you reveal yourself as a dead player by flipping over a wound and ending your turn and not being played anymore. And if you become a werewolf, getting three bite cards with no uh, with no uh, charms to negate those cards, then you're going to turn into a werewolf, and you're going to try and turn everybody else into one as well. The game will progress into the final night, where something interesting will happen and then you're going to do a final pass and the final thing will be the growl in which players will start thumping their hands against the desk and uh, if they're a werewolf and if they're not they're going to just say they're silent if there's at least one person who's alive and saying they're silent as the human player the humans win if everybody's thumping except for dead players then the werewolves win let me go ahead and show you the setup for the game as well as a couple turns of play all right, so we're back to the board again. As you can see, I have now taken the cards we don't need, along with, in the five-player game, we're going to take out four wounds and two bites, so these are going to be removed from the deck and not be used. We have knight cards and a final knight. The final knight will go on top of the deck, and then the next knight, it's going to be uh, two-thirds and um, three-thirds into the deck, so something like, like this. So we'll couple these cards here, and then a couple more, place another knight card, and then after that, you're going to take the deck just like this. Choose a starting player after dealing out one card each. This is going to be the player that starts off as a werewolf, and they will be werewolf for the rest of the game. They can never turn. And then all the rest of the players are humans, and they're going to get one single gold. They're going to take these cards and add them to their hand of three additional cards you're going to deal out to them, and then they're going to secretly look at the cards themselves. These are cards that only they get to see. And so if at any point in time that somebody gets three wins at the beginning here, you're going to need to shuffle them, but it's very, very unlikely to happen and in this case it doesn't happen okay and so we've got all the cards here Ooh, look at that 
Now, as you can see here, you've got three bites here for this player, so he's also a werewolf to start the game off with, which also rarely, rarely happens. As you saw, that was one gold, and they somehow managed to get three bites here. So now that the game is ready to begin, you have the players set up with their hand of cards, and the deck is there. You're going to take this deck here and turn it over. You don't need this anymore either. Now, let's say the first player was this player here. They have a charm card, and they can choose to give it to any player they want, and these players can ask for it. Like, uh, maybe this player say, oh, I've got two bites and if I get another bite, I'm going to turn. So this player's like, oh, well, I'll give you the, the charm then. The next player is going to say, okay, um, he's definitely a good guy, as you can see, and he has a bite he has to give out. So even though he's a human, he has to give one out. Who can handle a bite? Oh, I can handle a bite. I don't have any, so he'll take it, right? And the next player is going to deal out one as well. Maybe he wants to be more, more keen on giving it to somebody who can, I mean, we'll just give it to him. Finally, this player here, who is the starting werewolf, he can give out a bite to anybody he wants. Now, obviously he wants to pretend like he's human, but at the same time, he's trying to make other people turn into a, a werewolf. So maybe he'll give it to this player here. And it's gonna continue going like that, giving people wounds and stuff like that. If at any point in time, there is three wounds in somebody's hand with no salves, then they're going to turn uh, into a dead player. And three bites and no charms, they're gonna turn into a werewolf. If you have three wounds, but you also have a salve, and you were dealt the wound after you already had a salve. Like, for instance, he has uh, one wound here, and let's say he got, here's his charm, let's say he got another wound, and finally somebody dealt him one more wound. If I can find one really quick here before the night phase, maybe I can't. Eh, we'll just put this one on top there just so I can explain it to you. We'll deal him one of these guys here. So now he's got three wounds, which would mean he'd be dead and he had to reveal himself if, let's say, this player gave it to him, right? However, if he happened to have a salve beforehand, he would actually only have one wound. You wouldn't count one of them because this salve would negate wounds. So when he gets the third one, it would only still count as two, so he would stay alive. Charms work the same way with bites. However, if you've already turned into a werewolf, it doesn't matter if you get uh, any extra charms or whatever, that's irrelevant. And like I said, the players are going to be continually dealt cards out from other players until some suddenly the night phase begins. There's also this little hex card that means all of your charms are useless. During the night phase, you're going to do whatever it says. It'll tell you to do something like uh, send a card of your choice from your hand to a player or have a player give you a card. And then you're going to have everybody deal out cards from their hand to players on their left and right. So this player here would give out two cards he doesn't want to a player on his left and right, or cards maybe he wants uh, to give to them. So for instance, he's a, still a good guy and he has two bites, so he can't get rid of those, but he can give wounds to the players. So if he wanted to, he could give these guys wounds uh, a face down, right? And then this player, he could also give out cards, so he'd maybe give this hex, he doesn't want this, to that player, and maybe a gold to this player if he thinks he's good. And uh, this player would also do the same thing, he'd give cards out, until eventually everybody had two cards, right? So we'll just randomly deal it like that. So now everybody's got two cards, they would take these cards here, they would shuffle them up so that they didn't know who gave them what, put them into their hand of cards, and then they're going to go ahead and check to see if they have turned or if they have died. If they died, they have to go ahead and reveal themselves as being dead, and if they're a werewolf, they're going to continue playing the game as though they have been turned without letting anybody know. So this guy here, he's still alive, and his salve negates his wound, and he's still not a werewolf. This guy here, he's got charms, two wounds, he's still okay as well. This guy here, he's a werewolf because he started as a werewolf, but his hexes are negated, so he might want to give this hex to somebody else. He is still a werewolf because he started off as one. And this player here, we'll see about this guy here, he's got two bites, uh, three, four bites, and one charm two wounds and a gold. So he's not dead. The charm negates this bite, but he still has three now, so he's a, he's a werewolf for sure. So all three of these players are werewolves, and these two are left. And you're going to continue playing that uh, back. We're going to discard this card, and it'll go back to turn order, in which players are going to then start dealing these cards out to players again, until after the next night, and finally the final night where something interesting will happen. Deal the cards out one more time, uh, from left to left to right, and uh, remember, werewolves can give out bites, but nobody else can. And then after that, they do the, the growl part, where you start thumping the table and whoever is a werewolf is going to do that. Whoever isn't, who's still alive as a human, will not, if there's any left. And the players, if they're all werewolves, will win, or if there's one human, the humans will win, whether they're dead or not. And that's the basic idea for the game, Growl. 
So Growl is basically Werewolf Light, but it has an interesting aspect in which you're going to be dealing the cards out from the bottom of the deck, and you're going to see them and you're going to pass them to another player. Of course, you don't know what the next card is, but the next player will, and you are trying to determine whether or not you want to give cards to certain people, or if you want to ask them for cards, or say, oh, I can't take that card, or I don't want that card. If you're a werewolf, you don't want to get more bite cards, you'd rather them give them to other people, so you're going to lie and pretend like you're not actually a werewolf. Be like, oh, if I get one more bite, I'm in trouble, right? Or if I get one more wound, I'm in trouble, because you want to pass, you want the human to be either dead or turned. And you also kind of want to keep yourself under the radar as best as you can. Humans are looking for other humans to give gold to and also to re restrain themselves from turning them into other werewolves as well as killing them. At the end of the game, which is also interesting too, if your team has survived, they're going to look at the amount of gold cards in all of their hands and add that many points to their roster in which you would keep playing the game. You can play a one-off game if you want, but if you want to continue playing, there is a way in which you're going to be adding gold to the uh, to the the scoring aspect of the game, which is a cool little uh, addition. So what do I think about the game Growl? Well, this game is basically a small version of like Resistance of Werewolf. And that's a good thing for me. I really like these type of games. I like the added mechanisms. I like the random cards in which you kind of have a little more option. It's not just guessing and checking with Werewolf where it's kind of just you don't know what, you, what anybody else is and things just kind of happen, which can be fun in a social game. This kind of has a little bit of social and a little bit of strategic aspect as well because you're giving cards out to players and you as a human being have this bite you have to give out and, and now the choice comes. Do I want to give this bite to somebody who might still be a human but may not be able to handle you know an extra bite card? Card. Or this guy is claiming that he can't handle any more bite cards, but really he's probably a werewolf. Maybe I'll just give him another extra bite card because it's not going to hurt him, and it's also going to benefit me. I want to keep myself alive as long as possible as a human being and stop myself from turning. However, when I turn, my objective is to not die and turn everybody else, otherwise I have lost the game. So there's kind of a reason why you want to stay in it no matter what you are or how you're doing, how you're acting in the game. The also really cool thing about the game is the end, the growl, where you start thumping, 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 going, ah, the, the beginning uh, of the growl starts with the main werewolf, the original Wolf Zero, and everybody else starts joining in. And if there's any people left, because the werewolves are kind of going like this, looking around, hoping everybody has turned, and that one person is a human is going, I'm not going to clomp, I'm not going to stomp the table because I'm actually a human and you've all just lost because you couldn't get me. Oh man, so many good times we've had. We play this at conventions, we play this here with multiple different people, new people. It's a game that's super easy to learn, super easy to play, super quick, and it plays a good amount of players. Four to seven players, and that's excellent. Four is just enough players, I think, in the game, and it plays well all the way up to seven. It gets a little more challenging, I think, depending on the amount of players you're playing. Also, you're going to be taking out cards or adding cards, depending on that as as well. There's a couple cool cards like the uh, hex card that removes charms and uh, a couple cool knight cards that do different things. There's a silver bullet final knight that does damage to more werewolves than humans but the human can still die from taking it so on and so forth. You get the idea. Um, I like that aspect of the game because it adds that little kind of werewolf ability, like one of those cards that wouldn't normally do something like the old hag removes a player. This actually has come out a knight card that does that just once. Um, there's room for uh, growth too in this game. You can add new classes, new characters, more cards to the deck, you can increase the length of it. But as it stands, it's simple and it is complete as far as strategy goes. The artwork is cute and fun. It has the cute little werewolves attached to it, but it's still a little dark in theme, which is kind of nice. It's good though because you can play with kids, you can play with family, it'll work out no matter what. And it doesn't require a lot of uh, guess and check work as much as maybe werewolf would be. Overall though, the game is excellent and I think if you're interested in trader-based games and want something different, lighter, and new, definitely check out the game Growl.